Hey guys, Taki here. I've got a small video for you today on a very small yet interesting product. This is a pocket SSD that I featured in my ROG Ally first look video and I mentioned in that video that I would do a standalone video on it because I think it's a pretty cool product. I've been using this thing for about two weeks now and I think it's an interesting product that I want to put on your radar. So for those of you guys that don't know, Charge or Chargeek is a company that makes high-end portable chargers as well as some other accessories. Some of their portable chargers are very affordable like these two here, but they also have some high-end ones like this. This little guy is a niche product, but it works very well on gaming handhelds, and I'm going to show you how I've been using it later in this video. Let's start by doing an overview of this. Right now I have this inside the protective case that it comes in. You can use it with this case on, but if you want to use it on gaming devices like I tend to, you need to take it out of this case. This thing is pretty straightforward. On the top, you can see that it has a lanyard attachment, and I have the attachment right here, but it can't work on this. There's a protective flap on the top. If you lift that up, you gain access to the Type-C port, and if you want to use this with the case on, you're going to need a female to male adapter like this. I think they're going to sell it with the adapter, but I'm not sure. Mine didn't come with one but it would look like this if you wanted to use it in this way. Then all you would need to do is connect it to a device to be able to use the drive. If you did want to use this with the case on, you would need to lift up this flap here to get airflow. The enclosure would take in air from here and then exhaust it out the side. So if you had this thing closed, it would heat up way too fast. But yeah, I only use this for storage with the case on. If I want to use it on a device, I end up taking it out. We just lift up this flap, then we get this around the corner, and then the entire thing comes free. Now we can get a better look at the drive itself. So this is the front side and this is the back. Again, the fan takes in air from this side and then it will exhaust it out the side as it cools off the main PCB. Enclosures like this aren't anything new. There are USB adapters like this for every size of M.2 drive, but some of them do have issues with overheating and this one doesn't have that problem. The rest of this is pretty bare. We just have that port on the top. There's nothing on the bottom, nothing on that side. We have the fan exhaust here with a lock switch to put this into read-only mode, and that's pretty much it. Right now I have a 512 gigabyte drive in here, but I'm gonna swap it out with a two terabyte one that has all of my games so we can go to the next section of this. So changing the drive on this is actually pretty painless. All you have to do is push up on the lid and then it will come free. And then you'll see that our entire drive is just held in place by this little rubber nub. You just lift that out of the way, and then you can take out your drive. Underneath that drive is a pretty thick thermal pad, and then we have the main PCB attachment here with the fan on the bottom. I actually want to see what this looks like on the other side, so I'm going to try and do a complete teardown on this so I can see how the fan is attached to this board. This thing uses T6 screws, and thankfully I already had a tool for that. So here's what it looks like when the entire thing is off. We have a very small fan here with a Realtek controller that handles the business end of this device. Our read-only switch is right here on the side and that big thermal pad is right there on the back. The entire thing is pretty compact and it does a decent job of keeping this drive cool. Let's put this back together. This is a two terabyte M.2 drive from Western Digital, and it's the one that I was using in my ROG Ally video. Installing this is pretty simple. All you have to do is slide the PCB into the connector and then lift up this little rubber nub to lock it into place. Then you just slide over the lid and you're good to go. Nice. Now that I have the two terabyte drive installed, I can just show you how I've been using it. The way that I use it kind of changes depending on the device that I'm using with it. I'll just go through a few scenarios right now and I think you'll be able to understand how this could work for your situation. So in the ROG Ally, we only have one USB port on the top. So if I'm going to use this, it's really just to transfer files or to transfer games over to the device. If I plug this in, you'll notice that Steam recognizes this as a Steam drive and it's filled with a bunch of games right now. My internal storage is almost full with all of the games that I have installed. So what I'll do is transfer games between the internal storage and this drive when I want to swap games out. If I don't, then I'll just plug this drive into a Type-C dock and then I'll connect my device to the dock to get power and my external drive library for gaming. If I'm playing a demanding title on the device, it's probably one that needs to be run in turbo mode, so I don't even need to worry about transferring big files back and forth, I just play them from the drive connected to a dock. Other handhelds that have multiple USB ports work a bit better than this. These would be handhelds like the iNeo 2 or the GPD Win 4. With those handhelds, you can plug the drive into the device while still being able to charge it. On the iNeo 2, I can plug this in on the left USB port away from the exhaust, and I still have another on the top that I can use for power. This doesn't obstruct the volume buttons and it works great. I have a separate drive that I use just for the Steam Deck and that is the 512 gigabyte drive that I started out with. 
This one requires a bit more work to get it to be automatically recognized like the Windows handhelds, but it works in the same way. I don't usually play with the drive connected because I usually play my deck on battery power at lower TDP. The drive works great for swapping out the small collection of titles that I keep on my deck. If you've ever done an upgrade to the drive that came with your Steam Deck, this is a great way to reuse that older drive. One thing that I want to point out is that this enclosure does limit the full performance that you can get from an M.2 drive. They rate this solution at 1000 megabytes per second, but they don't say if that's read or write. If we take the internal drive that's in my ROG Ally, for example, that one can go over 4,000 read and a bit over 1,500 megabytes per second for write speed. This drive gives me just under 1,000 megabytes per second for both read and write, which is far from the performance that this could get if it was added internally, but it's perfectly fine for how I use it. There's one part about this that isn't ideal at this point. I don't know if this is going to improve before this hits retail or not, but I did bring it up to the company. The fan that's in here is pretty loud under a heavy load, but it's also loud even at idle. The fan curve that they are using is way too aggressive, and I'll just give you a sound clip so you can judge for yourself. This is at idle. I don't know if they'll adjust this profile or not, but I'm considering a DIY mod to try and improve things if they don't. As for the price, this thing is supposed to sell for $29 for just the case later this month. These kinds of things can go all the way down to $10, but a lot of the cheap ones that I've used have thermal issues when I use them under load. But that's going to wrap up things for this one. If you enjoyed this video, take a look at a recent video that I did on the ROG Ally versus the Steam Deck. I used this drive on both of those devices. Happy gaming everyone. Talkie out.